Today we're at the Volan Studios in Tribeca, New York, and we're here to interview Nigerian-born producer, hit maker, Cinematic. He's producing for a new artist. Her name is Van Roxanne. So let's go and check it out. Two, three, three, four. Hi, this is Aina again for Eye of Africa, and we're at the Volan Studios with Cinematic, yeah. Nigerian-born producer, chemist, hook. How do you how do you describe what you do? Who are who cinematic? I am a music producer. Very passionate about music, about uh, artist development, about you know songwriting, arranging, bringing people together. You know, because being a music producer is about bringing a lot of ingredients together. It is much like being a cook because ingredients matter. You know, not just. Uh, you know, instrument-wise, but you know, the, the the right drummer, the right keyboard player, the right uh, you know producer, the right engineer. You know, that's that's one thing I learned from you know the great Quincy Jones. He was always good at picking the right people for the right records, bringing them together, and you know, definitely that was one of my my early influences. But yeah, that's that's what a producer does. It, so you were born and raised in Lagos. Yep. Can you tell us a little bit about growing up in Nigeria? Um. I was, I, I traveled a lot, you know, uh, when I was born, I, I lived in Nigeria for maybe about a year, then we moved to Holland for, for about a year and a half, then back to Nigeria, so I feel like from the very beginning, you know, my influences was all, were already international. Mm -hmm. You know, the Beach Boys, Beatles, yeah, yeah. you know, ABBA, everything, you know, it was just a really, really rich collection, you know, Jackson 5, Motown, like, I felt like I was exposed to everything at an early age, and of course there was the Nigerian music, but yeah. I feel like, you know, because of the international movement at the very beginning, that definitely started to shape my, my musical ear. Right. It, just, it just opened it up just to be like, look, just to kind of accept all those influences and then fuse that into the music I do now, you yeah. know? So, you know, my parents both went to school in England. My mom went to, to music school in, in England. You know, my dad studied to be an engineer in England. That's where they met. Mm -hmm. So, they brought, you know, that, that was actually very crucial because they, uh, they went to college in the 60s. Mm -hmm. And that record collection was probably the very first introduction to music. You know, we were just always around music, doing music, you know, playing music in church, playing concerts, doing anything we could musically just to kind of, just to stay, you know, we didn't really think about it like it was work or it was like we're trying to be musicians. We were just like, you know, we had instruments around the house. We had guitars, you know, we had you know, organ, piano, you know, different percussion instruments, you know, we just used to just jam out and then eventually later on you know we got like you know drum kit and just different things so always always music so always it's music. that your parents are very supportive in terms uh, of definitely what definitely yeah. really supportive yeah. I mean you know I, I was the first to go to really say yo I want to do this as mm -hmm. a career because mm -hmm. you know, I, I was one of those kids that was always interested in everything you know I was interested in computers a lot interested in music interested in you know sports and all these other things you know when it's time for college they were like well is he really gonna stick with this music yeah, thing? Because yeah. <laughs> we knew kind of all over the place. Too. Yeah, yeah. But then I think after the after I got the the Berkeley scholarship, they were like, okay, this guy's like now other people are recognizing right. it. You know what I mean? And then you know, and like I said, I was just you didn't have to ask me to go to the studio. Like I was, you know, I was motivated. I was very very self motivated. And once I, you know, it was a time when music and computers came together, and they were like two of my. Two, two loves of mine right, right. and like I said you know Nigeria the only the only example I had of a producer was you know Quincy Jones we are the world yeah I think you went to Berkeley for composing well, well, actually or? I initially went for for music production oh, okay. but the thing is I'd already produced albums by the time I got to Berkeley so I, I, I decided after about a year and a half two years like I need to focus on what, what I'm weakest at right. so then I took up arranging and composition classes but funnily enough, I actually got my scholarship to Berkeley based on my er, composition skills. So I just knew that I needed more work right. in that area. 
you're, you're hyped up about you know Berkeley College of Music. Oh, it's one of the top schools, and Quincy went there, and all these other big people went there, and you think that. Now you got your degree, you're gonna to go to New York and you're just gonna shut it down, <laughs> you're gonna run the city. That's exactly what didn't happen, right. you know what I mean? Like, you know, I got there and I was struggling and I was like, yo, I had to get a day job, I had to, you know, and honestly, the, the, the level of musicianship here was just so high that like, I just kinda had to just take a step back and see where did I fit in. Music has become very blurry in terms of the audience mm -hmm. and genres that sort of cross mix in. Right. How do you, as a producer, how do you stay true to the sound but yet produce? It's it like it's no longer regional. Back in the day, there was Motown in Detroit. Right. And right, then there right, was right. rap music in the Bronx. Right. Sort of deal. Right. Right. Um, right. And then you had Afrobeat in Nigeria. Right. Now it's a global society. How do you produce music? Because you're dictating what we want to hear. Mm. It's, it's always an interesting thing because, you know, musicians, as far as I'm concerned anyway, sh you sh should never be regional anyway. You know what I mean? If you call yourself a musician, you should always be interested in music just because it's great music, not because it comes from one place or another. I mean, you know, growing up, I used to love, you know, Brazilian music, I used to love Argentinian music, I used to love, you know, obviously African music. I, there was, to me, it was all one thing. You know, and uh, to, well, to a lot of great musicians, I remember even someone like Ray Charles talking about it one time. It was like, look, there's, there's soul in every music. Like, it's more about you as a producer just trying to find the best, the highest form of artistic expression in whatever the style is. And I feel like that's why your sound will always be your sound. It's not because it's in the genre, it's because it's you. So it's, it's like, I feel like it's, it's just about expression. And when you're secure in who you are as a person, it translate into, translates into your art. And for me, that was very, very key, like as a producer growing, coming up, was you're always influenced by things that inspire you. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I was always open to, en to any and every influence, and then I would take in the inspiration, and I would just interpret it the way I heard it, because it was, I found out that the way I heard it was never the way somebody else heard it. And I just got more confident expressing my what I heard in my head, and if it's that genre, when I do it, it's, it becomes mine. If I do a country record, it becomes mine. If it's, if it's, uh, you know, if it's a Cat Dahlia record, it's it's my type of Cat Dahlia record because you know it's that kind of thing. So I think that's that's kind of how I see it, um, and I think it's only a good thing because I feel like it's it's a positive thing that we're now open to fusing so much more into 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 the music, and it's just going to make for better music. How do we bridge the gap between what's going on here for you, and how do we bridge the gap? Back home, back because well, the pop scene in Nigeria is, you know, it's the largest sort of entertainment industry on the continent. Right. You know. Right. But I'm sure there's work to be done. How do we oh, yeah. the gap? Oh yeah, there's definitely work to be done, but I, I think it's going in the right direction. You know, it's really, really good music coming out of Nigeria. I just think that now, you know, now that it talks about you know things like you know royalty collection and right. things like that that are you know the rest of the world is now seeing Nigeria as a viable, you know, indus music industry, and it's, which, you know, it's always been viable, it's just that um, now I think the time is right for it to really explode, and it's, the, of course, and that, uh, with that, it's the opportunity that comes with all the producers in Nigeria now, but again, the main thing is, Nigerian, when you're in Nigeria, obviously, you, you kind of have to find a way to continue to challenge yourself. Yeah. I think that's actually one of, one of the things I'm actually trying to do eventually, is get some of my friends who are really great you know, guys who've engineered Rihanna, guys who've, you know, produced great big records and bring them to Nigeria be like, look, these engineers have great potential, you know, they just need to know that, you know, hey, just do this, do this, do this, you know what I mean? Just to always have that barometer to always say, okay, we can do this better, we can do that better. I think if you continue to strive for excellence and you continue to expose yourself musically, um, I think only great things will happen, especially for the Nigerian and the African industry. Creative mind, you should never, you should never be narrow-minded anyway, still. you know what I mean? No. And that's the thing with me is that, you know, people like Cat and there's other artists behind Cat, you know, Van Roxanne, you know, different people that I'm working with now that have, you know, Poison Ivory, another artist in LA that I'm working with that, like, they challenge me as a producer and I feel like I only do, I do my best work with with artists like that as a producer you want to capture that moment you got like three minutes so yeah. three and a half minutes yeah. to capture a performance yeah. and I want to make sure that when an artist sings on the record that I created that they felt like they reached one you know if not the, the highest level of musical expression they could reach because 
the music just put them in that mode and put them in that zone where they could feel like they were free enough to do that. You know, so that's what I'm trying to do. I think as producers, we should, whatever you are, whatever level you are as a producer, however you do it, as long as you can, you're using every resource available to you to create the best record and not shortchanging the consumer, I feel like you're doing your job. And you've built a pretty good team around you with uh, G. Yeah, yeah G. Oh, well, Gonzalo. Yeah, Gonzalo, Gonzalo Contreras. From that's Chile yeah, originally. That's and, my, that's uh, my, the Argentinian. Um, Ignacio. Ignacio yeah. as well too. Yeah, my yeah my engineer, my engineer assistant. You know, I take I take Gonzalo everywhere I go just because you know I know I demand a lot of myself and I demand a lot, of my, you know, from others because a lot more is demanded of me by the labels and by all the people I work with now. So it's like I needed a team of people who understood that and you know, understood how to rise to the occasion the way I have to rise to the occasion. And, you know, it, your team is, is so important. Your team is really important. So as we close off, what inspires you? What drives you? What motivates you? For me, definitely, you know, excellence inspires me. You know, beauty inspires me. You know what I mean? Beauty in every aspect. You know, I feel like, you know, if, if, I, if I keep doing that, obviously, God, you know, God inspires me. <laughs> Uh, yeah, inspiration comes from God ultimately, I believe, anyway, and, and that's what I depend on the very most. If that runs dry, then I feel like I don't have anything, because I feel like, you know, He's the reason I'm here, He's the reason I, I can wake up every day and, and just think about what next to do, because musically, sometimes I don't know exactly what I'm going to do, and I just sit there and it kind of flows, and I know that it could just come from me, you know what I mean? So, God inspiration is definitely a big one, too, and so, yeah. Thank you so much for allowing us to crash your session today. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. You're welcome to come fun. back anytime. And thanks for joining us for today's episode. Thanks to Volant Studios, Cinematic, and his whole entire team. And of course, thanks to Van Roxanne for allowing us to crash her recording session. Join us for the next episode of Eye of Africa. Thanks so much. Take care. <laughs>